welcome to yoga. You won't need anything for today's video, but here are some optional props that I recommend. So pause the video here to grab your things. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's begin. Meet me in a seated position, an easy seated pose on your mat with your ankles crossed and your knees open like a pretzel. And then place your hands on your thighs, palms down, sit with a tall spine, chin parallel to the ground, relax your shoulders and close your eyes. Take a big breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Again, in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And seal your lips and continue breathing in and out through your nose and become aware of everything that you feel wherever you feel it in this moment. Then make your way into a tabletop facing the front of your mat on your hands and knees. I do recommend placing a hand towel underneath your knees for extra cushion. You want your knees directly underneath your hips so that your thighs are parallel with each other and your hands directly underneath your shoulders so that your arms are parallel with each other. And to create the top of your table, you want your back flat. So instead of letting your belly drop down towards your mat, Use your core to pull your navel in towards your spine and that will hold your core in place and flatten out your back. Bring your neck up in line with your spine so that the back of your head and your back are all the table top. This is an active pose. So if you were to hold it for even a minute with this core engagement, you would feel your core working. This is your neutral position in tabletop. So to add on cat cow spinal waves, which are very common in our yoga practice, first for cow pose, drop your belly down towards your mat and lift your chin up. This is stretching the whole front line of your body should feel good. And typically we match this with an inhale. So breathe in. Then exhale, come back to your neutral position in tabletop. Pull your belly in, neck is in line with your spine. For a cat back, round your spine, tuck your chin, even tuck your tailbone like a scaredy cat. You're pressing everything away from the mat and then pull your navel in here. Take a breath in through your nose. Big breath out. Then come back to your neutral position and tabletop. And again, for cow pose, drop your belly, lift your chin, Feel the stretch along your front. Inhale. Exhale, come back to tabletop. Neutral spine, belly pulls in. For a cat back, round your spine, tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone. Pull your navel in even here for one full inhale. And exhale. And come back to your tabletop. One more of each for cow pose. Drop your belly. Lift your chin, big breath in, big stretch. Then exhale back to tabletop. Nice flat back, belly pulling in. For cat back, round your spine, tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone. Navel pulls in, big breath in, big breath out. And come back to tabletop, well done. Meet me in child's pose. Separate your knees wide towards the edges of your mat. Bring your big toes to touch behind you and it's okay if they don't touch. I just want your shins in the shape of a V. Then sit your hips back towards your heels and you can always place a pillow underneath your hips for more support. Then lower your chest down towards your mat and extend your arms out long in front of you and rest your forehead on your mat but sometimes this is a little too intense to start, so you can always stack your wrists or your fists. 
underneath your forehead. The purpose here is to rest and relax. So relax. The muscles in your face, your jaw, shoulders, and hips. And slowly rise and take your time as you lift your head and press into your hands and make your way to a tabletop on your hands and knees with your knees directly underneath your hips hands directly underneath your shoulders find your neutral spine so that your navel is pulling in towards your spine your back is flat and then extend your right leg straight back behind you with your toes pressing down and your heel pressing back. You should feel a stretch in your right calf. And while you do that, keep your belly pulling in towards your spine. Keep your neutral position in tabletop. Then lower your right knee down and switch sides. Extend your left leg straight back behind you and drive back through your heel as you pull your navel in and keep your neck in line with your spine. Then lower your left knee back down into your tabletop. And then here we'll do something called thread the needle. So watch me the first time if you've never done this before. You'll take your right hand and thread it through the space underneath your left arm. I'm calling this the hole of the needle. Come all the way through until your right shoulder comes down onto your mat. You can rest your right ear down on your mat. And if this is a bit too intense to start, you can always place a pillow underneath your head. And if you're watching this the first time, then go ahead and rewind the video and join us in this twisting position. But once you find yourself in your twist with your hips high and head low, then just focus on your breath and the stretching, twisting sensation in your upper back, maybe even in your right arm. To come out, de-thread the needle by pressing into your left hand returning your right hand back down on your mat in tabletop. And we'll switch sides. Thread your left arm through all the way until you come to lie down on your left shoulder and your left ear can rest down on the mat. If you used a pillow on the other side, make sure you use that here. And wherever you are, breathe in and out through your nose, calmly, and deeply. Then take your time and dethread the needle. Come back to your tabletop on your hands and knees. For your first and only down dog of this practice, walk your hands forward one hand's distance, then curl your toes under behind you, and with bent knees, lift your hips up, lifting your knees up off the mat and keep your knees bent as you press your chest towards your knees. Feeling a big stretch in your chest and your shoulders. And then you can work on maybe straightening out your legs a little bit, but I do recommend a soft bend in your knees to help release your lower back. Try tilting your tailbone up towards the ceiling as you press your hips high and back. Now let your head hang heavy so you're not straining your neck. Your gaze can rest between your ankles and it does help to take your feet a little bit wider. Breathe. This is a challenging pose in the beginning of your practice, but just remember that the more you practice down dog, the easier it gets. And someday you might consider this a resting pose, but that might not be today. So go ahead and walk your feet in towards the middle of your mat. Walk your hands back towards the middle of your mat and find a forward fold somewhere near the middle of your mat, but keep your feet wide. 
generous bend in your knees in this forward fold so that you can release your lower back, your spine can hang heavy, even your neck is relaxed. And I do recommend using blocks here underneath your hands to help support the weight of your upper body. Wherever you are, remember to let your head hang heavy. Do your best to hinge from your hips, just folding as much as you can and breathe. From here, step your left foot towards the back of your mat into a low lunge position and prop yourself up on spider fingers or on your blocks, but stay low as you drive back through your left heel with a deep bend in your front knee and find the position that serves you. The closer your feet are towards each other, the less intense this will be. The farther they are from each other, the more intense it will be. And remember, this is not about pushing yourself as far as you can go. So find the position for you today. Then spin your back heel down and rise up and place your hands on your hips. And just take a moment here to pause. Let's set this up. Your right toes are pointing towards the front of your mat. Your left toes are pointing towards the side of your mat. With both legs straight, your hips are open towards the side of your mat. Then keep your upper body nice and straight and just tip towards your right. So you're hinging at your hips and you won't go very far because you should feel a very deep stretch in your right inner thigh. Then just stay there. Try not to push deeper into it because it's really about training your body to trust you. So once you're in the stretch, hold and breathe. And be mindful that your upper body is open. You're not caving down towards the mat. Your head isn't drooping down towards the mat. And holding this position will not only stretch your inner thigh, but it's also strengthening your core and back. For three, two, one. Rise up. Then turn your hips towards the front of your mat and pivot your back heel up, finding yourself into a high lunge position. This is our variation of crescent lunge, but we're taking our hands to hips so that we can focus on alignment. So with your thumbs around your back and your fingers around the front, push your thumbs down to help rotate your pelvis down. It's a very subtle sensation, but it should increase the stretch you feel in your left hip flexor, the front of your left hip. You're here for three, stretching and strengthening two you're doing great one lower your hands down towards your mat and then lower your back knee down towards your mat and i definitely recommend placing a hand towel or some kind of cushion underneath your back knee here then rise up to place your hands on top of your front knee kind of in a proposal position this is our variation of crescent moon and instead of just going as deep as you can possibly go, I really want you to focus on your left hip flexor. So take your left hand to your left hip and push your thumb down into your lower back and you should feel an increased stretch in your left hip flexor. Your front foot is there to help you with your balance. If you tend to sit a lot throughout your day, then you probably have tight hip flexors. Most of us do. So this is a really great daily position that you can do to help counter all of that sitting. You're here for three, two, one. Lower your hands down towards your mat or on your blocks. Curl your back toes under, lift your back knee up and step or hop your left foot all the way up into your forward fold at the top of your mat. Take a moment here to just reset, noticing how your left leg feels versus your right, with your head hanging heavy and your breath calm in and out through your nose. And then to switch sides, step your right foot back, finding your low lunge position 
Prop your hands up on your spider fingers or up on blocks. Find the depth of your lunge that best serves you today. Then hold and breathe. And notice the stretch you feel in your right calf or the strengthening that you feel in your left hip. Then spin your back heel down and rise to stand with both legs straight, hands on your hips, left toes pointing towards the front of your mat, right toes pointing towards the side of your mat, hips are open towards the side of your mat. Keep your upper body nice and tall and just tip to the left, hinging at your hips until you find a stretch in your left inner thigh, then hold. Make sure that your chest is still open. You're not caving your shoulder down. Your neck is still in line with your spine. This is our variation of triangle pose. Much easier with your hands on your hips. You're going to feel a lot of lengthening in your left inner thigh. You might even feel the strengthening of your core and back as you hold your body into place against gravity. Don't forget to breathe. Three, two, one, rise. And with your hands on your hips, turn your hips towards the front of your mat with a bend in your front knee and lift your back heel up, finding yourself in your high lunge position. You should feel a decent stretch in your right hip flexor, the front of your right hip, and your left hip is working to hold you in place. To intensify the stretch in your right hip, press your thumbs down, and today you might be feeling all hip flexor, next week you might be feeling all quad, week after that might be hip flexor and quad. Notice how you feel every time that you repeat a pose, because this is called a practice. We're supposed to repeat the poses, and your strength, your flexibility will come over time. Now lower your hands down to your mat and lower your back knee down. Use a towel to support your knee if you did on the other side. Then rise up to place your hands on your front knee for your crescent moon. Your front leg is there to help you with balance, but the focus here is on the deep stretch in your right hip flexor. So take your right hand to your right hip, thumb around the back, fingers around the front, and press your thumb down for a subtle rotation in your hips. And this should intensify deep in the stretch that you feel in your right hip flexor, maybe even in your quad. Everything else about you is calm from your breath to the muscles in your face, your shoulders, your hands for three, two, One, lower your hands down on your mat or onto your blocks. Curl your back toes under, lift your back knee up and step or hop your back foot forward into your forward fold at the top of your mat. With your feet about hip distance, a generous bend in your knees, hinge deeply from your hips. Let your upper body hang heavy and your neck can relax. Feel your breath as it travels up and down your spine. Now, if you're using blocks, go ahead and place them off to the side and with a deep bend in your knees, slowly unroll your spine all the way up to standing. Take your time. Your head and your shoulders will be the last to arrive. And once you do find yourself at standing, meet me in Samastiti, a standing position with your hands together at heart center like a prayer. Take a big breath in through your nose. 
out through your mouth. Again, in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in and out. The word yoga means to unite. And what you unite is your mind and body. So from the yogi in me to the yogi in you, namaste.